The quicker we attach an AED to a person in sudden cardiac arrest, the greater chance they have of survival. Most people who go into sudden cardiac arrest will still have some electrical activity of the heart. The most common arrhythmia is ventricular fibrillation. The term arrhythmia refers to any change from the normal sequence of electrical impulses causing abnormal heart rhythms. This can cause the heart to pump less effectively. When the heart is in ventricular fibrillation, it is fluttering. This type of arrhythmia will not allow blood to reach the brain. Within four to six minutes, irreversible brain damage can occur. The national response time for EMS is about 10 to 12 minutes in most populated areas. This is where you and your expertise can be life-saving. You are that critical link to the survival of the patient. If you can begin CPR immediately and attach an AED within a few minutes, you can provide this person with a second chance at life. You can make a difference. Odds are if you're not trained in CPR and do not have an AED on site, this person's chance of survival drops to about 14%. What could be more wonderful than saving someone's life? If CPR is performed immediately and an AED is attached to a patient within a few minutes, their chance of survival increases 75 to 80 percent. In California, all businesses will follow Title 22 requirements when incorporating an AED program at their facility. It is required by California law to have a certain percentage of your employees trained in CPR AED, but it's highly recommended in other states. Many states have already added the AED to their Good Samaritan Law. Eventually, AEDs in businesses will be a standard, and if business does not have an AED on site, there's the possibility they could be held liable if a situation should occur. Hey, ma'am, can you call 911 and get yeah. the AED? AEDs offer a practical way to save more lives in the community. Because of survival rates, there's been a big push for public access defibrillation programs worldwide to promote businesses and people in the community to have these devices available. Public Access Defibrillation Programs, PAD, means making AEDs available in public and or private places where large numbers of people gather or people who are at high risk for heart attacks live. Each state and local agency has its own laws governing PAD programs. Businesses don't have to worry about their employees shocking someone that does not need a shock. Shock will be delivered in 3, 2, 1. Shock delivered. This machine will not allow you to shock a person unless they have a shockable rhythm, even if you were to press the shock button accidentally. These devices are very safe to use. Before operating an AED, there are some special considerations. When you arrive with an AED at the scene of a person in sudden cardiac arrest, quickly look for special concerns which may change how or if you're going to use the AED. Children. A person needs to be one year or older to attach an AED. Use adult electrode pads on victims eight years and older and at least 55 pounds. Some AED units come equipped with pediatric pads or a child key switch that can be used for ages one to eight years old. If no pediatric pads or child key switch are available, adult pads can be used on children. Never use pediatric pads on an adult. Before attaching an AED to a child, Two minutes of CPR, or five cycles of 30 compressions, followed by two breaths, are recommended. Implanted pacemakers or defibrillators. Place the AED electrode pad at least one inch to the side of any implanted device. Placing a pad directly over an implant may reduce the effectiveness of defibrillation. These devices are underneath the skin and create a hard lump. The size is about one to two inches, usually with a visible scar over it. Water. Remove the person from the water. Dry the person's chest before attaching the pads. Medication patches. Remove any medication patch while wearing disposable gloves. Never place electrodes directly on top of medication patches. If the patch is in the way of the AED pads, remove it and wipe off the area with a gauze pad. Then apply the pads to the clean, bare skin. Placing an electrode pad on top of a medication patch may block delivery of shocks or cause small burns to the skin. Hairy chest. If someone is extremely hairy, you'll need to shave the area where the pads are to be attached. An extremely hairy chest will not allow the machine to analyze correctly. Sweaty chest. 
A sweaty or wet chest needs to be dried before attaching electrode pads. Once the pads have been placed, don't remove them. If they need to be removed, a new set will need to be applied. If the victim is wearing a bra, remove it before placing electrodes. AED Safety During analysis and shock, do not touch the person. Warn others. Everyone clear. clear. Look at them while saying this so they understand it applies to them. You're clear. I'm clear. We're all clear. Shock advised. Then press the shock button. Supplementary oxygen should be moved at least four feet away from the patient when the defibrillator is in use. Maintenance. Your medical authority will go over what's required. Most machines will do an internal self-maintenance daily check. If a problem is detected, the machine will transmit an audible alarm and the indicator light will turn red. The AED distributor needs to be contacted immediately for repairs. A daily check sheet is usually required by the medical authority. Deployment. If the AED has been deployed, medical oversight needs to be contacted immediately. At that time, they'll make sure that all procedures are followed. Remember to restock all items used. Most machines have a computer chip that records the victim's rhythm and shocks administered. Some AEDs have a recording of audio available. Medical oversight will download the information and deliver the information to the doctor treating the victim. Electrode pad placement. It's important that the pads are placed on the patient properly. The right pad is above the right nipple below the collarbone. The left pad is below the left armpit outside the left nipple. On some machines, the pads are interchangeable. Others are specific on which side they'll need to be attached. Electrode pads have pictures on them so you know where they should be attached. Supplies in the AED carrying case. In your supply kit, you should have an extra set of electrode pads, several pairs of disposable gloves, at least two CPR mask barriers, a pair of scissors, one razor, a towel, and gauze pads. Protocol at this time says that an AED should be applied once you have determined that the person is unresponsive and not breathing. As always, scene safety is the first concern. Stay back, guys, stay back. You go call 911 right now. Sir, can you hear me? Determine unresponsiveness. If unresponsive, call 911 and get the AED. Mo! 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 Vicky! Call 911 and grab the AED! Okay, I'm on it. ABCs. Airway. Breathing. CPR until AED arrives. D. Defibrillation if no breathing. The following is how most AEDs are operated. AED operation. Power on AED. On some units, opening the lid will power the unit on. Other units will have a power on button. Attach pads. Choose the correct pads, adult or pediatric. Use pediatric pads for one to eight years old. Do not use pediatric pads on eight years and older. Use adult pads for adults eight and older. Analyze rhythm. Most units will automatically go into this mode after power is on and pads are attached properly. Make sure everyone is clear of the patient. Press shock button. You'll be prompted if shock is indicated. If shock is indicated, the shock button will light up and you'll be prompted to shock the patient. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. Shock advised. Charging. Stand clear. Shock will be delivered in three, two, one. Shock delivered. Remember, before you press the shock button, make sure no one, including yourself, is touching the patient. Give the all clear sign. Some units are fully automated and will shock the patient if indicated. Now let's go through all the steps necessary to utilize the AED for a patient in need. Scene safety. Check for unresponsiveness. If unresponsive, call 911 and get the AED. Next, you're going to A. Open the airway. Then, B. Check for breathing for at least five seconds. If not breathing, give two breaths and start CPR. Start with 30 compressions followed by two breaths. Continue until the AED arrives. Once the AED arrives, it needs to be attached to the patient immediately. CPR can still be performed while the second rescuer is getting the AED in operation. Power on the AED. Attach pads and look at pictures on the pads. 
Stand clear as it analyzes. Press shock button if indicated. After the AED gives the shock or indicates no shock, it will instruct you to start CPR by starting with chest compressions. After two minutes of CPR, the AED will prompt you to stop as it analyzes again. You'll repeat this cycle until 911 gets on scene or the patient shows signs of life. Regardless if the shock is indicated or not indicated, you will do two minutes of CPR, which is five cycles of 30 compressions, followed by two breaths, then stopping to let the AED analyze every two minutes. It's important to listen to the AED and follow the prompts. Tear open package and remove pads. Peel one pad from plastic liner. Place one pad on bare upper chest. Peel second pad and place on bare lower chest as shown. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. If the patient is breathing, leave the pads on them. You can roll the patient on their side. Continually monitor the patient. The machine will continually monitor the patient's heart. If the machine recognizes a certain rhythm, it will tell you to stand clear as it analyzes. If the patient is in the recovery position, roll them on their back if the machine indicates to analyze. Sometimes you can shock a patient and get a heart rhythm back and later lose it again, having to shock again. This is one of the reasons we never take the pads off the person. When EMS arrives on the scene, they will attach their own unit onto the patient. Congratulations for learning the importance of how an AED can help a person with sudden cardiac arrest. We hope you never have to use these skills, but if you do, it's very possible you can save the life of a person in need.